Welcome to Inside the Paint, an inside look into all of the action of the British Basketball League. I'm Tahir Haja, and we have another big week in store for you. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the British Basketball League YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the action. Well, this Friday night, we were treated to a clash of two of last season's heavyweights when the London Lions travelled up to take on the Leicester Riders. Let's take a look at what happened. Well, the London Lions were determined to take home a win when they arrived at the Morningside Arena. But the Leicester Riders weren't going to take this lion down and went point for point with the Lions for the first quarter. But it seemed that the Riders couldn't keep this energy up as the luminous Lions dominated the next 10 minutes, leading by as many as 19 points at that point in the quarter. And the Riders finished the half down 36 to 52. Coach Rob Padanostra must have had some strong words with the Leicester Riders because they came back fighting and started to knock down those triples, outscoring the Lions in the third quarter. But Leicester's small bench became even more evident in the fourth as the Riders failed to catch the Lions early lead and London took home the win with an 89-79 victory. Well, it was a great game. We were here in the studio for it. You know, Lions were superb on the night. Shooting percentage, 66% from the field. The Lions done what they were supposed to do. They came on a business trip and all the guys were locked in and focused from the beginning to the end. I think Leicester done a great job early on, you know, sticking with them. It was an up and down contest, really closely fought in the first quarter. Um, but then Sam at halftime, he even alluded to it. Second quarter, they sort of put their foot on the pedal and yeah, they, they eventually pulled away. Pedal to the metal, but for the riders, they now look for this new recruitment uh, to help them get over the line in these games. It's only a 10 point game in the end, and you can't help with somebody else with the scoring ability in the roster that could merely make a difference. Yeah, they're just missing that, you know, key piece, maybe one or two players. But Rob, it's not stressing about it because only 10 points to the London Lions. Um, Washington are obviously playing well, McKenzie coming into the uh, starting lineup. So they're kind of a new team, and this is what takes time. The chemistry. Uh, you know, getting over the players that have left. But they're okay. They don't need to freak out just yet. But, you know, they are seventh in the table. So maybe there is a little bit of uh, apprehensive going on at camp. Uh, a little cheeky shout out to the Seshwan Dons. Seshwan Russell getting yes. it done this week as well. Well, look, we've had two other games tip off so far this week, starting with the Caledonia Gladiators hosting the Bristol Flyers on Thursday night. Josh Bett and Lloyd Garner call that game. Guys, tell us what happened in that one. Thank you very much to hear it, Lloyd. You know, what a great game it was. I mean, it was a bit of a sluggish start from both teams in the first half. You know, Bristol made a bit of momentum, but Caledonia, thanks to DeBose, really turned it around in the third quarter. Yeah, a close one throughout, really. We saw, you know, good and bad from both teams, as you would expect. But it was the step-up performances at, at crucial times. You know, we highlighted Farrell as Hodgic in pregame, said in his important piece, and today was the scoring from him as well as everything else. You know, but for Caledonia that the perimeter scoring often is the difference for them winning and losing and you know throughout the game looked like Bristol were going to sneak a win on the road in a really difficult venue until Ian DeBose really started to come to play in that fourth period pulled all the strings for Caledonia. Yeah Bristol's got to be a bit disappointed because on that final play with 2.8 seconds left you know they did get a shot off in the end but wasn't the right shot they wanted they had to go to Brad Green they got to be thinking could they have done a better job of trying to free up somebody or get the ball to somebody that could have put him in a better situation? I think but great defense from Caledonia. You know, they, they changed the lineups. They switched ball screens. They took away the threat of Trajan Jacob, who's the best guy for uh, Bristol in that situation. But Bristol will be looking at, you know, the frustrations of, of opportunities missed earlier in the game. They had that big lead before the half. They didn't close out the first 20 minutes with the lead, with the eight-point lead that they had. Um, they also had the turnovers. So we talked about 16 in the game and there was a period where they had three straight turnovers early in that third quarter where they were in the lead, where they had the rhythm. You know, if they'd been able to, to uh, continue that, uh, maybe it would have been different. So, yeah, they'll look back on the final play perhaps and say maybe they could have got a better execution, but they'll also be thinking about or they should be thinking about the plays missed before that one. Well, getting back to you to here as we're all finished here in Glasgow. Well, thank you very much, Josh and Lloyd. The other game that tipped off this Friday night was between the Newcastle Eagles and the Surrey Scorchers. Lloyd Bett, or should I say Josh Bett, was joined by Graham Hiscock for this one. How did this one go down, fellas? Well, thank you very much to hearing Graham. What a phenomenal game it was. Surrey Scorchers coming on the road. You know, many people would have thought Newcastle six wins in a row that they would take care of business. But you know what? The three-point shooting from Surrey proved that they're becoming unbeatable. 
Yeah, they really are. They've got so much confidence, so much momentum. And again, just huge input from the three-point line. 15 of 34 from behind the arc. And it's just the timing of the threes. Justin Robinson and then Tayu came to life in the corner. Exactly the same position for both threes. Plus his rebounding, taking the charge as well at crunch time. Super team effort by the Surrey Scorchers. Now, of course, we mentioned about Justin Robinson, the former Brixton Topcat, went to play at Rider University, coming back to the British Basketball League, two-time most valuable player, but also another player, as you mentioned, Teo Ogundembe, has been the face of this franchise, the two big three-pointers. I mean, it's a team game, and they're exemplifying that to perfection. Yeah, Teo is the absolute leader of this team, and they want him to be fit, and they want him to be inspirational and playing at a high level, and that's exactly what he did today. But Justin Robinson, these stats, 26 points, four rebounds, one assist, okay, the three turnovers, but he's assured he is cool and he is calm. Yeah, one thing for the Newcastle Eagles, they went on a six-game winning streak, but now it comes to an end. You know, something they could bounce back from? Absolutely. This is a blip. I think the 3-2 th zone was a real issue. They just couldn't quite work it out. Big, big night for McGill again. 18.7 steals. Not enough in the end. Well, all done from here. Back to you, Tahir, and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Josh and Graham. Well, make sure you let us know what you think. Leave a comment below with all of your predictions from this week's games. And make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the action. Well, on Saturday night, the Bristol Flyers will host the Sheffield Sharks. This is the third time these teams would have met this season. And so they are on one apiece. Azania, Bristol has had a tough couple of weeks. Are coming up the back of five losses. Your thoughts on this one? Yeah, five losses is tough, right? But losing Keedy Johnson, losing Lucas, their man down. Um, but, you know, they gave a good run to Caledonia. They only lost to them by three. They're kind of mid-table, um, struggling, but it's time for them to just take one game at a time. Don't overthink it. Um, but, yeah, I think I feel a little bit sorry for them because they are such a good team. But this is part of basketball. When injuries come, uh, players leave, other players have to step, step up. The Sheffield Sharks, they're circling the waters of the British Basketball League, Ovi, and they're working their way up the standings there under the radar. I feel like they started off a little bit slowly, but it worked in their favour. You know, they had a... A good base of how they wanted to play. You know Coach Lyons, he loves defense. His teams are always defensive-minded. Um, and, and they're a pretty good defensive team. But one of the guys who's really surprised me, and I think he's come he's come a long way this season, um, is Jalon Pitkins. You know, I thought he was just an athlete, if I'm being very honest. When I played against him last season, when he was on the scouting report, it said he gets downhill um, and he attacks the basket. But he's shown that he has much more to his game. There's much, many di much more dimensions to how he plays. Um, and he's really, really impressed me. He's been a leader on that team. Uh, he's been there night in and night out. And I think he's someone that they can depend on. So I feel like they're in there with anyone at this point in the season and they're continuing to improve. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be fit if we didn't talk about the return of Rodney Glasgow Jr. 17 points, El Capitan coming off the bench, getting it done, Z. Yeah, but the thing is, he gets to what he likes to do best, right? And that's the mid-range jumper. But he's strong, he's athletic, likes to take the bump, um, but they needed him big time. Well, look, on Sunday, we have two games coming your way. Starting off with the Caledonia Gladiators making the long journey down to the Copper Box to face off against the London Lions. And I think we're with Drew Lasker now. And Drew, I'm going to ask you a quick question here, sir. The Lions were handed their second defeat of the season last week by your Newcastle Eagles. Just a side note, they got defeated by the Surrey Scorchers tonight. How does that feel? Uh, it stings a little bit. It kind of... Takes, takes away from the luster of that huge momentum win. But, hey, this is the British Basketball League. We've seen there's no gimmies on the schedule. And if you don't come and bring it every single night, then you can be tossed an L. Well, of course, both teams have had European action, Drew. Uh, and now Caledonia can only focus on domestic competition. What's that going to do to their ability to take on the Lions on that night? Well, for them, I think this is a measuring stick game. If we look back, they've played the Lions on our second feature game on Sky Sports and got dismantled. But, you know, that was weeks ago now. And then also we got a, we, there's been a lot of talk about their roster. They just announced that they released point guard Jovicic. And so let's, it'll be interesting to see what they do with that team there. But for them, they just got to come out. They don't have anything else to focus on but the British Basketball League. So it'll be an interesting game. Let me know who you think is going to win, Drew. I can't have you sitting on the fence like this. 
well, you saw the London Lions are getting healthier. Don't tell anyone, and they're only going to be better. You saw tonight against the Leicester Riders. They just had a little bit of missed blips because they haven't been together collectively, so I see them being much better Sunday. Lions win easily. Well, thank you very much, Drew. Are you agreeing with that, Ovi and Azania? I'm going to say yes. Um, like uh, Drew said, you've got Decker coming back. Sharma is in full force. And, you know, they've still got a few other pieces um, to get do really lovely things. So for me, um, who's going to knock them off? The only time that people knock them off was Newcastle and Plymouth is when they're man down and when they've got injuries. But right now, they're looking good and they're looking strong. Do the Gladiators have a chance? No. <laughs> Quite frankly, no, they don't. Um, to be honest, I, I was surprised at the result earlier on in the season when they got blown out. Uh, I thought they had a better chance to win earlier on in the season before the Lions sort of had things set into place. Now they're only getting better and better. And up there in Caledonia, it looks like um, there's a little bit of uh, unsettling up there, a lot of changes going on. So I feel like they're trying to figure things out. And London's not the team you want to run into when you're figuring things out. That's true. Well, look, to finish off the weekend, the Cheshire Phoenix will host the Leicester Riders. This is the third time these teams will meet this season. And so far, the Cheshire Phoenix have dominated. And we are joined by two of Leicester's finalists, Dan Routledge and Ant Rowe. Well, fellas, the Riders have a rather lean roster at the moment. Do you think they'll be able to keep up with the Cheshire Phoenix? I think that's the key question to hear because we saw uh, in the game against London that, that Leicester didn't quite have enough offense uh, at, at the moment. And one thing Cheshire have in abundance is scorers on that roster end. Yeah, they average over 90 points per game and the Leicester Riders defense hasn't been dependable this year. I worry for them in the areas of Aaron Rye, who's back from injury now and he's firing all cylinders. And they've, they've, they've struggled to, to guard people like Chagua, who's coming into his own now, and Skylar White. He has been the massive thorn in their side. They struggle to guard him uh, from beyond the perimeter. A lot of clubs do, by the way, but riders seem to have more difficulties in doing that. So it has to be a defensive effort from the riders here to try and mitigate some of the offensive production from the Cheshire Phoenix. The other thing you mentioned here is that they've uh, beaten them twice already. You have to go back to 2010-11 for the last time. Cheshire beat Leicester three times in the same season. I'm sure Rob Padanostro knows that stat. He knows everything about his team, and it's not one he'll want to equal on Sunday. No, and this is a... Uh, it becomes more of a de desperation now. Your teams play each other four times. This has to be the win for, for the uh, the Leicester Riders. Now, where I would say is the Cheshire Phoenix did have an underwhelming performance at home against Caledonia. Their last game, they lost. So confidence could be on the brink there for this very high-confidence Cheshire Phoenix team. So if Leicester Riders can take advantage of that and get, perhaps get out to an early lead, then... It could be uh, win number one for them this year. But if they can't stop Cheshire shooting three-point shots, it's going to be a difficult night to hear. Well, we are living in different times. Thank you very much, Dan and Anro. They're taking us through that matchup between the Riders and the Cheshire Phoenix. Well, let's take a look then at those fixtures and results. There they are for you, Caledonia Gladiators starting off this weekend with a win 85 to 82. Newcastle Eagles 88 to 93 loss against the Scorchers. The Leicester Riders, they lost at home 79 to 89. London Lions. Uh, Bristol Flyers, 8 o'clock. They take on the Sheffield Sharks on Saturday on the British Basketball League YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. And on Sunday, doubleheader, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Lions taking on Gladiators and Cheshire Phoenix taking on the Leicester Riders. Well, another month of basketball has passed, and that means voting for November's Coach and Player of the Month is about to start on the socials. Now, i got a few contenders in my head, but you guys are the analysts, and we need to hear what you think. Who wants to go first? Usually I suggest, but who wants to, to claim their choice for today? All right, Ovi, go for it. You're up for it. Ooh, Come on, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you. <laughs> no, um, I've got Jordan Johnson. I think he's been playing absolutely terrific basketball. I feel like that Newcastle club, um, outside of today's loss, has been playing very, very well this month. I feel like they're starting to sort of bring all of that talent together. Those are, They were one of the teams that we really uh, spoke highly of early in the season. And he's sort of taken the leader role in that team. And I think everyone else, everyone else on that team knows that. And they've warmed up to him. And he's been doing a terrific job. And you partnering up with the coach element there, with who are you picking as coach? Is it Mark Stuhl or you got different? It might have to be Stuhl. Okay. It might have to be Mark. Um, I feel like, again, on the other side of things, on the coaching side of things, it's very, very difficult to bring in a team full of new guys that are very, very talented, that 
have been playing all over the place um, and get them to buy into to his um, what he wants to do, into his style of play, uh, and yeah, just all of the concepts he's trying to implement up there. So yeah, you've got to tip your hat off to him. An all Newcastle selection for Ovi. What about you, Azalea? Well, I'm going to go with Mark Studio okay. as my coach because I feel like he has been doing a tremendous job. I also love how he coaches. You can see how enthusiastic he is on the sideline. He wills his players. But for a player, and this might be a little bit controversial because... We they, like controversy. Because Come they on. haven't been winning that much, yeah. but he's been playing very well. Nick Lewis wow. from Manchester Giants. And because um, he's just been scoring and just playing very well. Don't be looking he's, at me like Obi's that. Obi's out here shaking his Stop head. Listen, you're, no, you're let me tell to do you that. a few stats, okay? So uh, in their Plymouth win, he had 22 points. Bristol, um, he dropped, uh, I think, 20 points. And then London Lions, he had 33 big points. Why is that not a vote for player of the month? Because they get slapped all over the league. Is that right, Ovi? Because <laughs> they've been getting spanked. That's why. That's why. I'm no, joking. no, no. But you know, she made a great case. Very good case. Yeah. But, yeah, I just, I'm just not buying it. Um, I feel like he's a very run-and-gun player. He, he gets out there, he shoots anything. It's like they're playing open gym up there in Manchester. There's not. I can't tell you one style of basketball that they're playing consistently. And hey, when you hoist up a bunch of threes, you're bound to hit something. If you throw a winning, rock in the ocean. If they were hey. winning, would, would that be a good vote? 100%. Uh, listen, I still think it's a good vote nonetheless, but we've got to wrap this up now, guys. Okay, Look, drop a comment below letting us know what do you think. Should Nick Lewis be nominated? Remember, you decide the winner. That's all from us this week. Drop a comment, let us know what you think, and make sure you like and subscribe to the British Basketball League YouTube channel so you don't miss uh, the any of the unbeatable action from the British Basketball League. See you next time.